Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Today we look at Psalm 20. Psalm 20, 1 through 9. It is the people's prayer before the day of battle. Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you in time of trouble. May God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from his holy sanctuary. May he support you from Zion. May he remember all the gifts you have offered. May he accept all your sacrifices. May he give you what you really want. May he make all your plans successful. We will celebrate when he helps you. We will praise the name of God. May the Lord give you everything you ask for. Now I know the Lord helps his chosen king. From his holy heaven, he answers with his great power and saved him. Some give the credit for victory to their chariots and soldiers, but we honor the Lord our God. They fall in battle, totally defeated, but we survived and stand strong. Lord, save the king. Answer us when we call to you for help. The nation of Israel is on the brink of war. Before the troops go off to battle, King David offered sacrifice unto the Lord. He has a multitude of royal subjects that are there to wish him success. And we see that in Psalm 20, verse 1 through 5. They prayed that the Lord will protect him and give him the victory that he need. David was encouraged by his people's prayer. So the king was able to express from his own faith and confidence in Jehovah and that which his people had. He strongly believed that God would intervene on his behalf. When we look at Psalm 20, verse 1 through 7, we'll see seven statements of confidence. One, he says, the Lord hears us in the time of trouble, in verse 1. He says, his name will defend Defend us in verse 1. He says he will send help from the sanctuary in verse 2. In verse 2 he also says he will strengthen us out of Zion. In verse 5 he says the Lord will fulfill all our petitions. In verse 6 he says he will hear from heaven. And in verse 7 he says God it is our God in whom we put our trust. So on the eve of the battle, the people look to the Lord to answer the king in the battle that was approaching. And they wanted God to turn back the enemy in crushing defeat when they chanted May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. They knew who was their defense. And we see the blessings that they obtain from having confidence in God. We see three blessings of the name of the Lord. One they say he is our defense. Number two, they says, we will set his name as a banner or as a standard by which we will fight. Number three, they says, we will trust in him as our means of deliverance. And that is in verse seven. They says, we, we will remember the name of the Lord or God. 
they understood that the name of God stands for the person of God himself. So his wonderful name is a defending name to Israel. His wonderful name that is a name that is on displayed for Israel. His wonderful name is the name that would bring them deliverance. So it is a defending name, a displayed name, and a delivering name. They now refer to the sanctuary in Zion. They knew that this was the dwelling place of God on earth. So it was reasonable for them to expect help from the sanctuary and support out of Zion. The king offered offerings, as we see, and burnt sacrifices, asking the Lord to show them favor. The king's desire was that the Lord would crown his plans and his purpose, and that his will indeed will be the outcome of the battle. They are anticipating a great victory celebration. Why? Their prayers were mixed with assurance of deliverance. When we look at verses 7 through 9. The Lord will send help from his holy heaven. The people had contagious confidence. In spite Inspired by the assurance of their leader, they were not afraid of the military, the military might of the enemy. The enemy were boasting in their horses and in their chariots that they use as always in battle. They were saying, listen. We have been tested and tried in battle with our horses and with our chariots. Israel was only boasting in the name of the Lord their God. They knew it was better to trust in God than in arsenals of stockpiled weapons. So, at the glimpse of the Lord, the mightiest army will crumble. They will fall to the ground, was their prayer. Those who are on the Lord's side, when the battle is all over, they were confident that they were the ones who would be left standing. They says we will be standing upright. We will not be the ones falling to the ground. So with this in mind, the people had peace in their mind. The people once again asked the Lord to give them the victory. They wanted their king. To be victorious. They wanted the Lord to continue to hear and answer their prayer and to send them the deliverance that they need from the throne room of heaven. So today, let us pray like these Israelites did when the enemy is up against us in battle. We have no other arsenal but the name of Jesus, the word of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit and his comfort. Because as we know, the battle doesn't really belong to us. It is the Lord's. And if we'll only pray and leave it in his hands, he is the one who always will fight or battle for us and win. He is never a loser. He has never 
lost a battle. Therefore, we can trust him to fight for us. Not in horses, not in princes, not in chariots. But we will trust in the name of the Lord our God. And at the end of the day, we will be victorious like these Israelites. And will be able to stand and to stand upright. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. And may God bless the United States of America.